Hey, so if you're brand new to the industry, or if you're just looking to upgrade your existing skill set, you've come across the cloud options that are available. And so now you're wondering, which one should you focus your efforts on learning? Should you pick one or should you learn all of them? And that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. Now, for those of you who are impatient, the short answer is AWS, unless you fall into one of the specific circumstances that I'm gonna describe in the video today. Hey, what's up? I'm Will from DevOps for Developers, and we're talking about which cloud providers you need to learn if you're learning your first cloud provider. So the first thing that we want to talk about is who are the leaders in this field? And you can look at this chart right here, and you can see AWS is pretty dominating with Azure coming in at 20% and Google being 9%. And then we're not even gonna talk about anyone below those three. It's just not worth the effort because when you've got those three companies leading the industry, um, anyone else in there, just really it doesn't matter what they do, right? And so AWS is obviously the leader, which makes it very compelling to make that your first cloud provider to learn. We also want to talk about the job salaries or the salaries that are available for those top three providers, right? Because that's obviously going to influence your decision, assuming that the reason you have a job is to make money. So if we look at salaries, AWS, the average salary for a job that requires AWS skills ranges between $140,000 and $150,000. Azure, the range is from $90,000 to $180,000 and Google is $134,000 to $174,000. So let's dig into that a little bit. Um, AWS, $140,000 to $150,000K, that's a fairly tight range because AWS has been doing this for so long, the skills are kind of a known factor in the skill set required. It's sort of just like washed itself out to, um, you know, to like a standard salary range, and that's what you're seeing there. Azure is kind of interesting though because ninety to one hundred and eighty thousand dollars is a big, big salary range, and my suspicion of what's happening there is a lot of the companies that are moving to Azure Cloud are companies that had their own Microsoft infrastructure in their own physical data center, and so then they start migrating certain services over to Azure. Now, along with their own servers and their own um, data center. They had their own IT staff too. They had their Microsoft Windows sysadmins, which typically like in the big scale of different things you can do in the tech industry is towards the bottom of that range. So you have these people that aren't making top end salaries and then they add the Azure cloud skills to their skill set and they got a little bump from their employer to do so. And that's why we're seeing that huge range there in my opinion. And then Google, $134,000 to $174,000. That top end is up there quite a bit, which might make it compelling. So let's talk about two things there. One, let's go back to the Azure salary range real quick. If you happen to be one of those Microsoft sysadmins who added Azure skills and you're in that $90,000 range, my advice to you is to start looking for a new job. Not because your employer has mistreated you or anything like that, I'm not saying anything bad about your employer. I'm just saying that there's more money out there, but the only way you're going to get that money is to go get a new job. An employer is not going to give you a $50,000 bump just because you ask for it. But you can negotiate for a $50,000 higher salary when you're interviewing for a new job with someone who needs your skills. As a matter of fact, there's a whole nother talk I should probably do just on negotiating for your salary because I'm willing to bet like nine out of 10 of y'all watching this video left money on the table when you negotiated for your salary, if you negotiated for your salary at all. So if that's something you wanna see, let me know in the comments down below and I'd be happy to crank out a video on that for you. Um, the Google thing, 134 to 174K is pretty nice salary, that's good money. Um, it might make it compelling for you, but I would not go that route. I would go with AWS over 
GCP. And here's the reason why. If we flip back over to this picture here, Google only has 9% of the market share, right? And we're talking about Google competing with Microsoft, competing with Amazon. These guys are juggernauts. They are not satisfied with holding 9% of a multi-billion dollar industry. Now, you or I would be more than happy with that, but someone like Google is not gonna be happy with that. So one of a couple things is gonna happen there. Google is going to either transition their cloud offering so that it hits a very, very specific niche that they can market to and campaign to and increase their profit margins, or they might just drop that product completely. That sounds like a huge statement there, but they've done it in the past and it's just the nature of their beast. You know, if they go into a market looking to dominate that market and if they don't dominate it, they've got no interest in staying there, right? So dropping their entire GCP platform is not out of the question based on the numbers that we're seeing in that chart. So for that reason, I would not go pursue Google Cloud certification or Google Cloud skills if that was my first choice in the cloud or my first entry into the cloud. I would stick with AWS. Now there's some other factors here that might cause you to switch between AWS and one of the others. For example, if you're learning cloud skills because your existing employer is migrating stuff to the cloud and you want to stay with that employer and you want to take part of that migration and learn those skills, whatever platform they're going to learn those skills. Even if they chose something like Oracle Cloud or IBM Cloud or Alibaba or whoever one of those minor players are, go learn that because you want to stay at this job and you want to be a part and you want to grow with the company that you're with. Now, if you're learning those skills because you either don't have a job and you want to get a job, period, or you want to leave your current position and go take on a new role somewhere, I still recommend AWS being the first cloud provider that you learn. One of the other things that might influence that though is if you have a job where you have skills that are very Microsoft specific, for example, if you're a .NET developer, then I, I might lean towards Azure a little bit more because a lot of your .NET shops are gonna naturally gravitate towards Azure whenever they move to the cloud if they're not there already. The other influencing factor there is the type of company you wanna work for. Some companies migrate to certain cloud providers for various reasons. For example, um, Microsoft heavy shops, uh, specifically industries like healthcare where they just have a lot of Microsoft products. They've already got this investment in servers in their own data centers that are Microsoft Windows servers and their staff, their IT staff is already well versed in Microsoft and they have this huge Active Directory infrastructure and Microsoft Azure is built specifically to work with that type of migration. So those guys migrate towards Azure just because it's a better fit for their infrastructure and their environment and their existing skill set. So if something like healthcare or something like a corporation that has a traditional corporate structure that leverages Active Directory very heavily is the type of job you're pursuing, Azure is gonna be a stronger candidate for you than um, AWS is. And that's something you really wanna think about, right? Because if you're looking for a new job, just getting your first job, or just looking to put yourself in a better position at your existing job, you wanna put yourself in the best position possible and the skills that you choose to learn are a really good way to influence that position as much as you can. And it's not like a lifetime commitment here. You know, if you learn AWS, only to find out that later that you need to learn Azure, you're not reinventing the wheel. All of these guys have the exact same offerings for the most part. You know, they all have the ability to launch virtual machines. They all have functions as a service. They all have managed Kubernetes service. They all have blob storage file systems. They all have managed database services, managed caching services, all that kind of stuff. The only thing that really changes is whatever they named that particular product. 
And then there's some differences in how you access it and how you orchestrate it, whether you use the GUI or their CLI tools or their APIs. You know, that's gonna change a little bit. The overall product offerings themselves aren't gonna change. One place that it does get a little bit different is in security and authorization and um, access controls like that. But nobody cares about that anyway. Just open it up to everyone and we'll figure it out. I'm just kidding, by the way. I'm really, really just kidding. Don't do that. But that is one of the places where you're gonna have to learn the different providers and how each provider handles that. But that's a, you know, in the overall big scheme of all the product offerings they have, it's not really a huge uh, insurmountable task. All right, so if you don't have any preconditions or um, scenarios that set you towards one particular provider over another, I recommend AWS. If you do have one of those pre-existing conditions like um, working with your existing employer or going into an industry that favors one cloud provider over another, or you're trying to leverage some existing skills that you have that point you to one cloud provider or another, follow that instead of AWS if that doesn't point you to AWS anyway. I uh, hope you found that helpful. While I still got you here, go ahead and keep scrolling down, find your next video. But I did release a book called The DevOps Career Guide, and we talk about cloud providers in this, along with a lot of the other technical skills that you're going to need to have a successful career in DevOps, including the soft skills, because soft skills are a huge part of DevOps. You can get this on Amazon in Kindle or paperback copy, and um, I'll put a link in the description below, and then I'll see y'all next time.